what to say honestly Valkyr really delivered before Computex and I think there's gonna be more at Computex but regardless of that we have a third release I think this week or in the last two weeks I can't remember precisely but regardless of that what we have right here is Valkyr V360 LCD we have it in white we have it in black and we have it also in 240 version as well so this is outstanding because we have a quite interesting screen we have quite interesting fans different fans again and we have something that really bugged me on another AIO this right here this line of course this is an extension so it doesn't pick up the lights from the fans it actually has an LED strip inside even though it adds a bit of a white to it, but I would say this is much better solution than picking up the light from the fans because as you can see the light bar is consistent compared to NZXT Kraken Elite which isn't. So in this sense this is really cool and I'm really digging the design. It does give a bit of a white as I said and uh, it kind of makes problems for much smaller compact cases if you desire to go with that but you can always remove that part which is really straightforward and simple now the fans come pre-installed and what I have to say is the pump block cover which is an LCD screen is removable magnetically attached to the pump so you don't have to worry about anything specifically uh, regarding that and the tubes the tubes are really flexible and you can really put arrange them quite nicely and you have three clips that come inside the box so that's it now when we're talking about LCD and I'm gonna say this right up front they updated their mid cool software which gives you an option of course to go with I think it's around 25 presets where one is do it yourself so you can modify it as you wish I'm just going to sh shortly show you that you can actually adjust the position of thermals clock speed uh, load and stuff like that but i didn't go too much into details and uh, just gonna leave it up to you regarding that when i mentioned the do-it-yourself preset it is a little bit wonky i would say because there still needs more work to do it, you can see that somebody just did a preset put it over there and just left it as it is but regardless of that it gives you an option to modify it and that's good it gives you option to choose other presets which when we take into consideration the screen what we have here is 3.5 inch IPS LCD screen which has the resolution of 320 times 240 refresh rate is 60 Hertz so that's good but the resolution is I would say a bit too low it would be quite solid if it was around 480 480 or 600 times 600 or depending on the ratio of course so it would be much smaller the second number but regardless of that I think it's still good and still going with the progress comparing it to sin 360 to 40 really doesn't matter this one looks much better in those terms and of course it's a bigger screen and the software is updated I'm waiting for a full update well hopefully I'm just guessing of course I don't have any information regarding that but what I would say is I think they're going forward with that and I think that's good I think that's really good now the cold plate is made out of copper radiator is made out of aluminium tubing length is 425 millimeters and the pump dimensions are 91 times 87 times 70 millimeters we have CIIR uh, plus EPDM hose for tubing material the radiator dimensions are 297 times 120 times uh, 27 and the fan dimensions are uh, 120 120 25 fan speed 800 to 2150 rpms pwm of course and we have a uh, adjustable rgb uh, second generation with a valkyr s12 fans the fan airflow is 81.68 cfm at maximum 4.0 Oh, millimeters is show at maximum for static pressure and the noise level is 29.5 decibels that's outstanding actually and the warranty is up to five years now when we go with compatibility it supports 2066 2011 uh, 1851 1700 1200 115x uh, and am4 and am5 for amd inside the box except the outstanding box and this is what they do they create an outstanding unboxing experience Valkyr did it again with the v360 lcd addressable rgb it looks great it gives that special feeling of a boxing something else and for some of you guys this definitely 
won't matter whatsoever. But when you take a look at this gigantic box, it's really something to actually hold on to if you're into that, of course. Don't get me wrong. So it's all up to you. But I think the packaging in some scenarios, and I think majority of people in the PC com community are enjoying this type of stuff, are enjoying having cool boxes. I don't know what's the, what's the deal with the boxes, honestly. I really don't know. Uh, so it's just some special... I don't know, feeling, experience, and stuff like that. But Valkyr brought it up uh, today uh, again, and that's outstanding, I do have to admit. Now, when we're talking about the enclosure, what you get inside is you get one Valkyr V360 LCD addressable RGB, you get three Valkyr S12 fans, instruction manual, accessories, and Valkyr figure, which I didn't get. I don't know why. But regardless of that, I think that's quite cool. I mean, now with motherboards, you get a keycap. Okay, that's something. But you used to get loads of stuff. And now with AIOs, you're getting something that is quite cool. So yeah, in that sense, outstanding. Uh, regarding the mounting mechanism and how you place everything all together, what you do is on for the radiator, you just have to place uh, 12 screws and that's it. For the AIO, well, for the pump placement, what you have to do is remove the original retention brackets from AMD motherboard. You place uh, the two retention brackets, one on top and one at the bottom part with you can either use the original uh, AMD screws or you can use their screws what they uh, give and then you have additional two retention brackets that go on the side of course each of those retention brackets have a uh, arrow with uh, direction where the CPU should be located in terms of this part needs to be facing the CPU when you mount the two additional retention brackets you use their fastening plates or thumb screws to lock everything into position. After that, you have pre-applied thermal paste and you get additional thermal paste inside the box. You just place your pump on the CPU, lock those two uh, screws on the side evenly, of course, and, and basically you have to magnetically connect the LCD to the pump block. Finally, what you have to do is connecting the LCD screen with USB 2.0 down on the motherboard and for the addressable RGB stuff and PWM, pump has a dedicated PWM, which is logical. Fans have also dedicated PWM. And then you have two addressable RGB headers running, one from the LED strip right here on front and one from the fan. So everything is grouped. The fans have daisy chainable addressable RGB 5 volts uh, header, which means that one goes to the motherboard and the other one can be directly connected with the LED strip. I know it kind of is, it, it is a bit messy. Let's put it this way. They could have somehow daisy chained the LED strip, but then you would have a problem if you wanted to remove it, you wouldn't be able to do so. So yeah, this on the other side covers the cables from the fans. So that's a good solution, I would say. In general, what I would say when we're talking about mounting mechanism, quite easy, straightforward. Okay, you do have two mounting mechanisms, two mounting brackets to place, but it's just two steps extra, nothing uh, in particularly hard. And everything else is just straightforward when we're talking about connection and stuff like that. Midcool can be downloaded from their website, the latest version, and you just install it. It automatically recognizes it and pushes everything that you want to go with. I mean, placing the presets or anything similar to that. Now I think it's time to go with benchmarks. And it's quite interesting because in 8064 Extreme Edition, CPU went up to 81 degrees. We're talking about, again, AMD Ryzen 9 7900X3D. And I'm using this processor because basically I have loads of comparisons so you can get more ideas about how it performs. But the clock speed isn't going above 5000 in this scenario. It goes up to 4900 megahertz. Now in Cinebench, it's quite interesting because it's on second place with thermals with 75.9 degrees, which is outstanding. Second, uh, very low with um, clock speed again with 4970 megahertz. But then again, when you take a look at the scores, 26,489 on average with 10 runs, that's outstanding because it really goes somewhere in the middle and I think the performance is up there. And I think first we have outstanding visuals when we're talking about this line right here. The fans, okay, they look a bit different. And of course, if you go with B fans, they won't be similar or the same to be like perfectly compatible in those terms, in visual aspect. But then again, 
you can just switch with these fans instead of the B fans. It's all up to you to decide which perform better. Unfortunately, I don't have other S12 fans to place on front side uh, to, you know, do the same comparison I did with the B B12 and uh, the uh, V12. But regardless of that, uh, you can see that it does look quite nice. And just in general, the tubings are very flexible. If you're going with a smaller case that needs more uh, tube rerouting, you can really definitely manage it. And these clips are just keeping the tubes nicely organized so they don't, you know, interlock, go uh, against each other or over one another. So it l really looks nice and tidy. And the good thing is that the tubes in this scenario are going at the bottom. Unfortunately, you can't rotate the screen in any scenario. I uh, didn't uh, find it in mid-cool software, but in that scenario, you would need to rotate the whole mounting mechanism. And I don't think in um, on AMD that would work. So yeah, in general, what I can say is it performs really good. That's the best, the, the most important part, of course. And then for the visual aspect, if you're into the visuals, when we're talking about the LED lights, and if you're into the screen, this is for you. The, you will definitely enjoy it. And that's it. That's all that I can say. It's a quite nice combination and the whole ecosystem when we're talking about Valkyrie in general. And well, we just have to wait and see what Computex brings us now. So guys, uh, this is it. This was uh, Valkyrie V360 LCD addressable RGB in white. I'll repeat it again. You have it also in black and you have a 240 model as well, which yeah, it's interesting. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to or find some time to review the V240 LCD just to give you some ideas how the 240 competes and how it performs just like I did in the past for the past AAOs for them. So yeah guys, thanks for watching. The links are in the description as per usual and do let me know what you think about the screen, about the fans, the LED. I mean, it's quite straightforward when we're talking about that. NZXT couldn't do it. I don't know why, but yeah, it's... I have to point that out. It's quite obvious. So don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button and click the notification bell. And I'll see you tomorrow in another one. Bye bye.